Hello, buddy. Welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor. Today we're um, going to be doing a Leona coaching session here. Sorry, grab a drink of water there. Um, so, special thanks to Colt from the you. chat for the generous donation. If you'd like to donate yourself for a coaching session, it's just $25. If you're not a channel member, if you are a channel member, then it's just $20. If you'd like to become a channel member, just click that join button on YouTube. It's just $5 a month. Help support the channel and the great community we have going on here. Hopefully the informative, useful content. And you can just email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com if you're interested. Or stop by the stream. It's on YouTube every night. Lately it's been starting around you know midnight to 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to try to get it back to about maybe 11 p.m. start time. The schedule's just been a bit different so far, but... Uh, this year of the virus but uh come by check it out it's friendly wonderful very chill community and check out the rest of, of the content as well on the channel i have um entire playlist of the coaching videos we have over 200 on the channel we also do tier lists for every patch we have champion guides um, top guides how to one trick best micro best micro all kinds of good stuff so be sure to check all that out okay a nice level one there walk up and auto attack him down now colt said that he's newer to support he hasn't played um he usually plays jungle in top lane so he's trying out support i think he said this is his first time um leona so it's good Draven got punished for not having heal there. He took cleanse. More and more AD carries are taking cleanse. This is a really bad idea, unless you're like a challenger AD carry. People just don't use it correctly. And heal is just so much more reliable. You get movement speed out of it, and it just it gives so much effective health to both yourself and the nearest person. Like It's just too strong not to have. shower today. Being out in the got some yard work. Alright. So the Master Yi's probably doing a full clear. Probably start bottom going to top. So you don't have to worry too much about the hand yet. Unless he's doing something really weird. Okay, so yeah, just push up here. Um, just help him push. Yeah, you gotta push one more. You can't let him freeze there. So just walk up with your W. If you put your sunlight proc on the minions, that helps him push a lot faster. You just, you wanna be pushing. Okay, then back up. You need to back there. It, it takes you too long to do scuttle by yourself. Like, you can do it, but it's just gonna take you forever. It's just too risky. You just needed to back. Alright. You did end up baiting them all. The enemy, but... Yeah, you just really want to get that back timing in when your ADC backs because if you can, because if you can't, then he's going to be sitting in lone for alone in lane for a while, and that means he's probably going to die. Huh. 
Yeah, you need to, um, whenever people are dead, though, you need to try to push. Okay. Um... I don't know if this is, like, the new thing people are doing. I have seen more and more people doing, um, Swifties. I still feel like either a defensive boot... run south because then um, your Lucian maybe could have stepped up to help you. It'll definitely rough because that's Pantheon and he does a lot of damage and he's got a full click stun. So I think you'd be better off going for um, running towards Lucian there. You did save the cane. Which is ultimately probably worth, but... Yeah, I still think probably Moby Boot is where you want to be on Leona. Especially against Pantheon, because you can gank him. Pretty easily in lane. I don't know, maybe Swiftness are the new hotness, but I... Generally have a hard time sticking to people, though, right? Because you've got your E on a pretty low cooldown later on with your Q. Yeah, get him, get him, get him, get him. Very nice we hit that, but it happens. Uh, okay, nice. I should get him, right? Okay, good. Okay, nice. Clear this push in and back. Maybe, yeah, just back, just back after you get this. Mm. I, I mean, I do like Scuttle a lot, but it just it takes so long as Leona. Like it's gonna take you 30 seconds to kill this thing, and you could just get. You do have pain sort of shadowing you. I think that's too long to be out of action in the lane. I mean, Kane's probably just gonna take this anyways. Like, he could have taken it without you. Like, I don't know. I would have backed. Because now the problem is y'all are low mana and you haven't spent the gold that you just got. So, now if you back, they're gonna get, um, they're probably gonna get two plates and a wave advantage on you. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not fully sold on swiftness. They did buff it by 5 movement speed, but on certain champs that have a harder time sticking, where... I don't know. Yeah. See, Lucian's out of mana. If Lucian just had mana there, they got shutdown gold and pike extra gold. Hey, thanks for the sub, Pavillus. I appreciate it. They got shutdown gold and pike gold because y'all didn't back. And Lucian ran out of mana. If Lucian had more mana there, and if y'all had spent your gold, if he had this extra warhammer, y'all would have definitely won. Unstoppable. Blue team double kill. Yeah, that is kind of a good point that Alistair makes. It's like Shut when you're trying down. to clear Scuttle like that, you are losing lane experience too, so you're going to fall behind on levels. Like you're already one level behind Pike in a lane that you've been dominating. That's not a good sign. So yeah, I do like Scuttle a lot, but Leona's just not a champion that can take it by herself fast enough to make it work. If you're playing something like Tom Kench or um, Thyra or Brand or just something that does a lot of damage to monsters, you could take a look at that, but... Nautilus is pretty good, too. This is W. Um, I, 
was about to say, I feel a little greedy. Y'all got them, but... I think getting the cleanse is fine. Yeah, that's just too far. Because you know Pike's going to be there. And they have a Pantheon. They have two teleports on their team. Master, we had no idea where Master Yi was. Like, I like forcing him to use his cleanse, but then after that, you just gotta roll out. You gotta always be careful with, with like, teleports and, um, macro champs, like, Pantheon that have jumps, or just really quick ways to get to bottom. Heh. <laughs> Hey, I like Leona. I'm just saying she should be killing crab by herself. <laughs> but I think she's still pretty strong. Yeah, Yi got a couple of those kills too. The problem with Yi is he's a time bomb, you know? And every time you give him a kill, you're basically, you know, knocking two or three minutes off of when, before he's gonna explode. <laughs> When he gets the three items, he's just so obnoxious to deal with. Gensu, Blood Razor, plus either Wit's End or Blatherin King. Okay, Pantheon's missing, and he, and everybody's missing on the map, so. Okay, Pantheon's back. I'm gonna try to get some deeper vision in there, too. Try to save your. Uh, I would have combined that with your Q immediately. You did get him, which is good, but... Okay, nice. Um, yeah, y'all can go for some plates here. Get, like, one more wave, two plates. Okay, Yi's top. Try to actively use your charges on the cannons. It makes a massive difference. Yeah, I guess you can get the last one here. It, it gets a lot of extra armor. It feels like an overstay. Y'all definitely can't do any more than that, though. I guess you forced Draven's ult. But now the problem is they might get your tower if you back because you overstayed. I would have just gotten the two plates and then backed. Mike might have helped you here, too. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. Because... Now, if you back and you're desync, then Lucian's gonna be uh... Lucian's gonna be desync. I think you have to stay at this point. I don't know. Hopefully, they don't die. If like Yi and Pantheon come down here right now, okay, Pantheon's TPing back middle. Looks like they're not going to take advantage of that. They had a little window there. They had about 30 seconds because they stopped your back where they could have dove. Um, okay. Got his sums. Flash and cleanse. can get out of control. It's almost invasive. Red team's I mean, it is hard to say, but... I mean, the, the fully optimal play would have been just to back after the second play, but... Alright, um... I assume you're either going Knight's Vow or Gargoyles. That's good. They are almost all AD, except for Singe. Singe is going AP. Um, yeah, I wouldn't overchase him. Uh, you need to have a Sweeper, too. As soon as you get your ward upgrade, you need to switch over to Sweeper. Okay, you gotta... Um, you want to combo that, like, as soon as you hit them with your Q, then you ult, like, right on top of them. Basically a guaranteed hit. If they, they have, like, 0.25 seconds to flash that after they wake up off the Q. I 
would ping your team and try to get Rift Herald at this point. Don't need to get at least one Rift here. And Dragon's coming up soon, in like a minute. Uh, this is just too much, just wandering around aimlessly. I guess you can try to mess with Singe, but it's usually bad. I would have just gone for Rift. Let's run. Oh, leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. Uh, no. That's gonna be your kill. Yeah, so I would have, um, I would have just gone Rift. Like, you had pressure top lane, you had pressure mid lane. Just go get Rift. It's free. People under Platinum really don't even care. Even a lot of Platinum people don't care about Rift. So, I think you could have, you had pressure top and pressure bottom. You could have gone Rift and then rotated, um, and got Dragon on the bot side. Now, you're definitely losing, losing Rift. They'll probably use it on the top side. So you'll still get Dragon, most likely, but... This is where the mobility boots come in. Where you... You know, you really need to be rotating around the map. Okay, so they're gonna use it middle. Middle, 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 middle. He's about to use Rift. Don't... Nice. Okay, well, Yi decided to rotate over at Chase Hills instead of Rift, so... Sad they're nerfing Kane's like he's finally viable to nerf in the next patch. I think he's a cool champ. Red, I think Red Kane is actually like kind of useful if he was just a bit more reliable. Did you just let you choose your form? I, I don't know. I like the you know it's interesting saying hey you have to go for melees or range depending on what you want, but just give people more control. Just let them choose the form no matter what in the orbs. So that's just like a feels bad when you're like, well, you know, the only melee they have is something that's hard to make. They have like double range bot, a range. If they made blue cane, not just like total trash, it'd be good. Rampage. That Zeke's vowel. That's pretty good. Yeah, y'all are just like not really getting anything. People are just kind of wandering around randomly. That's 
Really, that's just playing an easy. Then as a support, you know, Leona doesn't have a lot of wave clear. Uh, there's several builds you can do on Lucian. I think it depends. People usually do a blend. I think more people are doing crit on him these days. Because his double shots can crit. Stoneflight is good, but I don't know. I, I like the Zeeks. Hey, you gotta wait on him to finish the uh, alpha. Yeah, go ahead. Um, because they were winning lane pretty decisively, and Zeeks does add extra, an extra slow and extra damage. But I, I kind of like the, uh, the Zeeks. Maybe second or third. I mean, like... Stoneflight is good if you're having clean 5v5s. I just don't think that's the type of game that's going on here. It's just a bunch of people randomly, you know, running around. Okay, you need to be down bottom round, right? They got it. But... Okay, so we need to try to pressure Baron. Like, start locking out their vision. I mean, I agree. If they were, if you had like a five v five team comp, then um, you know Leona could work. Or, um, no place to work on Leona, but it does have very nice energy with her W. Yeah, I think it, I think it's just situational, depending on how if you're winning in lane and how uh, how much you want to team fight. I think the fact that she was already winning in lane really hard, especially because, well, um, I just think if you have a really aggressive lane and you're winning really hard, then um, especially against double armor, like they really don't have any magic damage on their team, so you don't get a lot of value out of the magic resist on stone plate because uh, Singe is going to be split pushing most of the time, probably, in an ideal world, so he's not even going to be at most of the fights, so like... You don't get any value out of stone plate um, on the magic resist side versus with knight's vow um, you get armor health uh, and protection for your ad carry and with zeke's same thing you get armor and a little bit more utility the slow the damage stuff like that so i mean if they had something like a zyra bottom instead or uh you know if you had like a misfortune um or just some other kind of team fight some other kind of team fight champ then maybe maybe stone plate gets a bit more value but because there were almost never three enemies in the area you wouldn't get <clears throat> you wouldn't get the uh the 80 80 bonus and like i said the magic resist is not going to be that useful so i don't think you're wrong i think that stone plate is good in a lot of situations i just don't think this game was one of them i think that um i think i would probably get now i don't know about that lock at third item um, but I do like the Zeke's and the Knight's Vow. I mean, I get Lockett's okay, I guess, at that point, but, um, I think what else you would get there. It's kind of overkill on the armor. That's fine. I mean, just some kind of utility item, probably be good. Um, could have maybe done like a Righteous Glory or something. It is, you don't really need it, but. 
pocket's fine. Um, okay, so the biggest things, uh, I think just overstaying in the bot lane, you know, pretty much after you get a kill, you push their wave into the tower and you back. The reason for that is that way you'll be back by the time the wave resets and gets to the middle of the lane, you should be about back and ready to go. Versus if you stay too long, you could die, you know, under the tower off of a dive. Um, or even if you don't die, you're basically borrowing from the future to do that. So if you stay for an extra wave, if you push them in a tower, then you get one more wave after that, then they're going to be at the lane by the time you back. And if they're back in lane when you back, that means they can push you in, and they're going to deny a wave to you. So anything past one wave, you know, you're going to get your gold early for your back, but then you're going to lose gold on your way back when you're walking back because it's going to be in your tower. And you lose priority, which allows the pike to roam middle if he wants. It allows them to get dragon if their jungler's on the bottom side of the map. So you're really opening yourself up to a lot more vulnerabilities if you don't back after the first push in. Um, now, sometimes that's worth. If, you know, your ADC, like, really needs a BF sword and they need that one more wave, they need, like, 200 gold or, like, 100 gold for BF, um, then maybe it's worth it, you know, to, to run the risk of losing priority and facing the consequences. But uh, most of the time, it's a lot of people, their back timing's not going to be that tight. Um, and then, so that that's that's the biggest thing, is kind of just the wave management in lane. Not over-chasing into the enemy jungle when you don't know where the jungler is. And just playing around um, their macro a little bit more. If you see double teleport on the enemy team, you always got to be a little careful. Um, especially if you don't have a sweeper. You didn't get a sweeper until, um, like, later in the game. Uh, so you got to be careful of people teleporting on you. Also, Pantheon with his ult. I think it's on a fairly low cooldown still. I, I don't remember. It's like two or three minutes. Um, I think they increased it. I think it, like, back in the day, it used to be like a two-minute <laughs> jump. But I think they made it more... Um, so yeah, you gotta watch out for that. But in the fights, I thought it was good. You know, you were hitting most of your E's. You were getting some good engages. There, there weren't many where it was, you know, shaky. Your team was in a winning situation, usually, when you got your engages. I will say, when you hit your Q, that's the perfect time to land your ult. If you do hit, like, the best opener a lot of times is to use your ult to open because it has the longest range. And that pretty much, if you land that, even the slow pretty much guarantees you're gonna land your E than your Q. So oftentimes you do want to open with ult, but if you can get away with um, hitting them with an E first, you do your E, your Q, and then you ult right on top of them, because um, the ult has a second and a half, I think, maybe not even that long. It's pretty much guaranteed you're going to hit them with everything. If you get them with the E, Q, ult, they're going to be stunned for like three to four seconds. Um, well, okay, so here's the thing. you got to be careful when you're pushing the wave. Like, you... Because you're right, um, Colt's saying in chat that sometimes he gets yelled at for pushing the wave. The thing is, after you get a kill, what you can do is just walk up, you know, with your um, with your W active, and then just like auto attack just some of the minions. And then once you put the sunlight procs on them, it allows the Lucian to clear it a lot faster. So in general, you know, just take the minions down to like somewhere between, you know, a third and half health, and then just let him finish it off. The thing you don't want to do is make it difficult for him to last hit. So you don't want him to get too low to where he's going to miss it. But you can get him comfortably down to 50% health. And it depends. You know, if you're pushing, like after you get a kill, most people in all elos understand you want to push the wave after a kill. But you're right that, you know, sometimes people will yell at you for pushing if, um, if the people are still alive. Sometimes people want to freeze, because that's what the challenger players tell them to do, is you got to freeze the lane. It's like, But you don't want to do that most of the time in bottom lane. In most matchups, you want to push. Push, get priority in roam. I've talked about this. I talk about this a lot in my lane management video guide on the channel. Be sure to check that out, anyone out there watching. Um, but your default state in most matchups in solo queue should be to push and do something with your priority, whether it's deep vision, roaming, preferable back timing, scuttle, dragon, something. Um, freezing is really only 
if you have to, if you just get completely blasted in the lane, you need to freeze it outside your tower just so you can live. Or if you are extremely far ahead of them and you can just walk up and zone them totally off the wave, um, then that can be a viable strategy in some situations. But that's a little bit more advanced. Most people don't execute that correctly. Most people, what they think of, like when they do a freeze, they just let it stay in the middle of the lane and then they just farm off with the enemy AD carry. And that's like pretty much the worst thing you can do. Um, like if you're gonna freeze, you have to be able to zone. You have to be able to push them off the wave to go with it, which means you need to be really far ahead most of the time. But then, you know, then if you do that, the problem with that is, yes, you're denying some CS and experience and you're gaining a big edge on bot lane, but then you're not influencing anything else on the map. Top lane still feeding, mid lane still feeding. You know, you're not helping out. Versus if you're constantly, if you push in, then you, especially on a champion like Leona, especially if you go like mobility boots, then you can roam and help your mid lane. Then you can help your jungler invade and start taking jungle buffs. Then you can get dragons. <clears throat> so I think all of that just gives you a lot more control over the game than getting incremental advantages on bot lane. Versus like in Challenger, when I mean Challenger players are not wrong when they talk about freezing being very strong, especially in top lane. It's not like they're bad players or they're dumb. Like it, obviously they're very good at the game, so they're correct in Challenger in certain matchups. But that's not the same as a silver game or a gold game, right? Because people like roaming and uh, you know just getting scuttles and dragons and stuff like that is so much more effective because people don't defend dragons that well. People don't ping when you're missing. Um, people don't ward as much. So roaming can actually be even more impactful if done properly in lower elo brackets. And so you really want that priority and you want to be able to go, you know, take advantage of the macro that people just don't understand in lower elos. Versus in challenger, sometimes it's harder to push and roam because of just a lot of different things going on. Um, but anyways, okay. Well, that's going to be it. Uh, Thank you so much, Colt. I really appreciate it. Anyone else that would like coaching out there, just email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com. Let me know what you have in mind. Uh, if you want to watch more coaching videos, um, I will have a link in the description. We have over 200 coaching videos on the channel. I've uh, got a picture with the champion that I'm coaching in the thumbnail, so you can very quickly flip through and find some champs you might be interested in. Come by, check out the stream. You know, like I said, starts around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually goes till at least 3 or 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've been going a lot later um lately but anyways okay that's gonna be it stream's gonna continue but that's it for the coaching so special thanks to colt and i'll see you next time